In the realm of background jobs, Solid Q is the newest contender, and it is one actually backed by the Basecamp team, which is where Ruby on Rails originated. And uh, you can think of Solid Q similar to something like Good Job or Sidekick if you come from that world. The difference is uh, a lot of, the, uh, not necessarily, but Good Job is database oriented, and Sidekick is more of a dependent on redis so that's the main difference aside from that the principles are all the same so that's basically what solid q is it's very similar to good job in my opinion uh, with some bells and whistles added and removed i should say so it might even be a simpler solution it's still in its early stages so it depends on um, active job to do some of the stuff and there is no real ui component built in like some of the other um, background job gems issue um, that's nothing to really worry about because I bet it will come. I actually already see, and we'll go through in this guide, a quick open source version of it that uses Bootstrap to just show you a GUI for the sake of something visual. Um, you can also just check on it in your command line, but that gets taxing when you have maybe hundreds of jobs to look at or um, kind of contend with, I should say. So what is Solid Q exactly? It's an open source background processing library tailored to Ruby on Rails. Its primary objective is to efficiently manage asynchronous tasks, ensuring your application's performance remains rock solid even during peak traffic and demanding workloads. So yeah, background jobs. That's why we, we love them. That's why we need them. So your app doesn't fall over when you're doing something kind of taxing, like sending a bunch of emails or transpiling data, all these kinds of things that could, you know, be a good use case. And I think it came about because the Basecamp team is developing a product called Once, which I believe is similar to a Slack competitor. So it might have some bells and whistles needed to handle kind of high workload. You want to add just the gem to your app, just like you would any other background job. So let's say Rails new, solid queue. Fun. I'm just going to use a vanilla Rails app, just just like so. It's going to use import maps, won't even touch the front end, so it's not a big deal to me. So we'll CD into that. If we open that up in a VS Code, I have the gem file here. We need to add. Great. Then we need to run bundle install. Or just bundle. We'll fetch the gem, install it, and now we're set to rock and roll with that. We need to run an installer to actually officially install it. So this will generate some stuff for us. So Rails generate solid queue install. And you'll see it gsubs into all of our environment files, creates a configuration file, which is necessary and adds installation migrations to the app. So when you run this migration, it creates a crap load of uh, columns into your app. And if you want to check into the DB or the environment folder to see what all has changed, you can look here and see if solid queue is actually added. I don't think it was added in the um, development file for whatever reason. Maybe it's a bug, but it is on the production environment and test environment for your background jobs. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Looks like it's just added to the production environment. So if you want to add it to your test environment, I would. Um, also for production or de development, I would do the same. I'm gonna do it for development so we could see it in our local environment and run jobs locally. Um, I don't know where to edit, maybe just at the end. Okay, so add that to your development environment. You could also, I mean, if you really want to, just add it to your application right here. And it just does the, the deed for all of them. And I'll close that out. We will run our migration. So Rails DB migrate. See how much it adds. So there's quite a few things here. And because it's database back, there's it needs to have separate set, um, columns to keep track of things. So there are foreign keys, of course, for each of these tables. And the tables are independent. So there's a global solid queue jobs, um, scheduled executions, ready executions, claimed executions, blocked executions, failed at executions. So Oh, there's pauses, processes, and semaphores. Quite a bit. 
So, um, yeah, don't know much more to say about the database. It is kind of neat that it's database backed. I don't need to go depend on Redis. So in your production environment, you might need a whole new like instance of a server or something to run that kind of stuff on the side, like side chain it, so to speak, so they don't fall over on a single app. Um, yeah, that's less of an issue now. So that's something that's pretty neat about solid queue. So with this installed, let's go back into our app. I wanted to point out that the config file was added as well. You'll see it in your config solid queue directory. You do want to uncomment this, so it will not work until you do. So it comes with some defaults. You've got dispatchers, workers, and those environments quite similar to your storage or database YAML file, if you're used to those. Um, it kind of just allows you to set some defaults and either copy them to the others. In the guide or the documents, you can see more stuff you can add, um, like concurrency, maintenance intervals, different queues you want to add to your mix. So here we've just got everything. You can add uh, different custom queues if you want. Change the threading if you want it to go crazy. Uh, processes or intervals, all those things. Um, I would stick with the defaults at this point, if you're new to this, because it seems to be a fresh um, solution in the space. I don't, I don't, I really don't know otherwise, but yeah, that's just kind of where I've landed with this guide, so I'll roll with that. Um, okay, so let's try to test this thing out. I migrated that database, so now we can run the start command, which will be bundle exec break solid queue start we need we have a syntax error in my yaml i think this needs to go over Let's try that once more there we go so it starts up and you see there's a dispatcher and a worker going to town this will basically be what's running and waiting for any kinds of of jobs to occur so in our other app we can or another terminal instance and in this we can create a new job rails generate job sample okay then it has a job in our app does nothing which is fine but we could just say a uh, sample job dot perform later you'll see it in queues and transact so we begin a transaction it inserts into our solid queue jobs database you see arguments that gets passed based on our configuration and other job characteristics and then um, it's in queued which is great and we get that stuff behind the scenes so it claimed one job on this one you need to basically run a new instance in your terminal and you can see all this the, basically the status of it at the moment that's essentially it it's pretty sweet so you know the basics of jobs is all handled in your database and just you know built into the app which i love there is more of course to uncork there are other configurations you can add and concurrency settings different database writing settings if you need to you know write replicas for separate databases um, up to you I, I suppose depending on your how sophisticated your situation is here's the concurrency stuff if you need to change different durations and other settings one thing i found interesting is that there are no built-in automatic retries so you get that out of the box with something like sidekick and i think good job which is very useful if you need, you know, just a background job to, you know, either continue trying so it, until it fails or just, you know, have that instance. Um, it does rely, they mentioned it relies on active job for something like that. So in this case, you can do a retry on a certain exception and do some sort of discardation um, or, you know, kind of catch rescue from some sort of error in that regard. And then when you do go and find that job, you can actually run the error or retry manually and discard it. Um, they mentioned here there's going to be something called mission control coming. That's going to be a GUI for this. So you essentially, if you come from, say, Sidekick, there was always this UI you could go to and inspect a job, see why it failed. You get like at least a little bit of an error to tell you what's up. Maybe you miss, missed some sort of code or something that didn't make it actually happen and uh, process so that's something to consider 
Uh, there is a little fancy Puma plugin you can append to your app. So if you don't want to run this bundle exec right solid queue start command all the time, you could go to your Puma config. We'll say Puma. It's in config slash Puma. At the bottom, there's a plugin you can add called, let's see, plugin. It would be solid queue. Save that down. Now when you boot your server, uh, it will just be Rails server for this app. We get stuff going on in the background, a lot of junk, um, basically just waiting, ready to go to town for background jobs. That's to me mind boggling and I don't want to deal with my console doing that. So uh, I'm going to go and remove that, but you could do something like that. So you don't have to automatically always run that in your terminal. I don't think it's a big deal to do that though. And uh, in the Twitter sphere, I actually found someone who made a quick open source version. Um, let me see if I can find the URL of it real quick. So I found this open source web interface for SolidQ uh, on the Twitter sphere, or X as they call it these days. And it, it's a web interface for SolidQ. So it's just a basic drop in version that shows some GUI components based on bootstrap. So nothing fancy, but it, it gets the job done. So if you do want to see some of this stuff, you can add it to your app. I'll do it real quick just to show you what I mean. So we'll go into our gym file, add this just below solid queue bundle. Cool. And he has Pagey as a dependency. So that's something to consider. And we'll go into our routes file. And th again, if you've come from the sidekick world, this is nothing new. You've got an engine that mounts to your app that you can have a namespace or something around so you can visit it and see your jobs that are actively going or processed. Restart the server. Okay, and now I could go to localhost 3000. It's going to go to the Rails instance, but if we go P A N O P T I C, we get our processes, our queues, and our jobs. Here's one that actually went. The sample job I created, scheduled, failed. So we've got a nice little instance here. Queue is just the default. You can add more in your configuration. So let's, I mean, we could do another. Rails generate job. Let's see. Um, admin mailer or hmm, 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 hmm. something like that. Admin import. Then we could say Rails console. Perform later. We've got jobs here you see it in line there so now we got this table of stuff uh, looks like it in queued did it finish so we don't have that command running so no it did not finish so bundle exec rake solid queue start should do its stuff there it finished it it actually imported the job, did the did the enqueuing, everything in the background. So again, you need that process running. That is something that's pretty simple to do if you need it uh, on a production environment. So that's some, something to consider. Um, but I love how simple that was. It's a quick answer to some sort of the, you know, some, some of the sidekick stuff I've done in the past. I pretty much always reach for sidekick personally, and I love it. I'm not disc discarding it, and I am kind of sad to see... Um, the Rails team kind of spearhead that side of the business for some people that have made the Rails, you know, literally their focus for so long. But it is neat to see something integrated. And I think more on the horizon when it comes to like authentication and stuff. So once that hits, I'll do more videos on it. Hopefully this was useful. Hopefully you got some sense of what solid Q is. I haven't used this in production yet myself, but I will probably take it for a spin before long. It seems like they're using it already on the base camp team. So uh, that's it for now. Hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Mm -hmm.